Free body diagram is a very useful device. <clears throat> I'm gonna call them F, B, D's. Free body diagram. The free body diagram can be constructed very quickly by following three steps. The first step is quickly, and that's actually the most important part of the first step, quickly sketch the object. And the object, when you would draw a free body diagram, is anytime you're interested in forces, accelerations, or how far something has moved during the time it's experiencing a force, or you might be interested in friction, or you might be interested in the coefficient of friction itself. Any of these times, forces, accelerations, or frictions, any of the times you want to make a free body diagram. Step two is actually the simplest step, and in step two, you're putting a dot in the center. In step three, you're drawing all the forces that act on the object. Why do I want only the forces that act on the object? What about those forces that the object exerts on other things? Can you tell me why we want only the forces that act on the object? We'll do an example of a free body diagram for a hot air balloon, <clears throat> and I'll label my free body diagram so that you know what's going on. This is a hot air balloon. Rising steadily in a huge wind. Okay, so first I sketch a hot air balloon. Done. Second, put a dot in the middle. Done. Now it's step three. Step three, I'm going to get a different colored pen, you know, live it up. There are three forces that I want to draw on this hot air balloon. One of them is the force of gravity. I will always draw the force of gravity first because when there's something near Earth's surface, it's going to have the force of gravity and I'll write it as m times g. The next step is to notice that it says rising steadily. So that gives me a clue as to how big the lift force is or the buoyant force, we could call it, on this hot air balloon. It tells me that it's rising steadily, which means it's in equilibrium. Check it out. We can go over here and look at equilibrium again. Equilibrium means the acceleration is zero, the net force is zero, the velocity is constant. So we don't know that the hot air balloon is in equilibrium as a whole, but we know that in the y direction, let's establish the y direction as up, in the y direction, the hot air balloon is in fact in equilibrium. So we'll say that this is the force of lift, or we could also call it the buoyant force. And then there's one more force. I'm saying it's an extremely windy day, so I'm going to say that the wind is pointing this direction. The wind is blowing the hot air balloon. Now, what we would do after we've got this free body diagram is we'll actually apply Newton's second law in each direction to try to think about what's happening to the hot air balloon. And that brings us back to my previous question. We draw the forces that act on the object because we want to know what's happening to the object. And the only things that can affect the motion of the object are the forces that act on the object. The object moves because of the forces it experiences. <clears throat> so, what we want to do is we want to look at this balloon and figure out which way it's moving. I think it's pretty clear that this force is canceling that force and the net force on the balloon is that direction. So here's the tricky thing though. I said the balloon was rising steadily. Can you see from the free body diagram that that balloon is rising steadily? No, no you can't tell at all. For all you know, the balloon may be staying at a steady, steady height and just accelerating to the right. But we know that 
Well, we know the balloon's rising steadily just because I labeled the free body diagram, but we're never going to show velocity on a free body diagram. We're never going to show momentum on a free body diagram. And we certainly don't show inertia on a free body diagram. So I'm just going to write this as one final rule for free body diagrams. Don't ever draw velocity. or momentum. Velocity is completely irrelevant for the acceleration of the balloon, and that's what free body diagrams can tell us. Also, momentum, completely irrelevant for the acceleration of the balloon.